Welcome back to the Skid Factory Quick Tech. Today we're going to talk about automatic transmission valve bodies. As with a lot of our Quick Techs, they're um, born from us working on a car and having an issue and sort of running through them and we like to share what we learn. So um, this transmission has been very problematic for us. Um, it's had multiple issues. Um, we've had, had it rebuilt by Mark, our local transmission guy. Uh, he refitted the original valve body. Um, it was a shift kitted unit. We don't actually know what's in it at all. It's a, uh, the shift kitting is usually just a, like a, a modified separator plate. Sometimes you just drill a few holes in, in large things. Um, they change springs for the shuttle valves. It's, it's kind of complicated if you're not um, a transmission specialist. Uh, the problem is, if you didn't do it, you don't actually know what's in there. So um, it continued to not operate correctly. Like it, it, it worked, but it had first and two seconds instead of first, second, third sort of thing. So uh, Mark went back over it. We pulled this apart. We found that it was actually the valve body itself was damaged. It, it had been compressed or overheated. We're not sure, but it's a, a cast aluminium case and the, the shuttle valves wouldn't move freely in the, in the valve body. So that's a pretty good sign that the, the, the thing's not happy. Um, we tried to, to use a different valve body in it, um, just another one, um, just to see if we could, like uh, proof of concept, I suppose you could say. But there's a lot of different castings in these things um, and we, we had no success with that. I called Pete at Hughes. Um, I said, what can we do here? And he's like, no problem. We have valve bodies ready to go, ready to bolt on, on the shelf. All the shift kit work's done. There's a multiple multitude of different styles of them. Um, this particular one is a manualized uh, valve body that is still standard pattern. So one is still down the bottom, two, three. There's also a version that is one neutral, one, two, three, which is a common drag racing use. Um, the two types require different modifications to the actual transmission, so um, we didn't want to do any, anything wild to this. It's not, a, not really a high performance vehicle, it's just a, a cruising car with a big engine. Um, so we picked that up while we're over there, and now all we need to do is remove this damaged one and bolt that one on top of it. Probably a common question with a valve body is you, you'll, you would have heard of a shift kit. So a shift kit is is making modifications to the valve body to, to improve the shift feel. Um, it usually increases line pressure and stops the shift from overlapping. So you don't get a bind in between gear changes where two separate gears are operating at once. Um, that, that wears the transmission out. Um, they do that. It, that's programmed into them from factory to make the shifts not feel nicer or so you can't even feel the shift at all in some cases but it does cause problems particularly when the engine's horsepower is increased um, you know twofold sometimes that's obviously going to wear the transmission out pretty fast so that's one of the one of the reasons why you do it um, so you can shift kit this particular thing pretty easily and cheaply the problem with that is it doesn't account for the age of this. This is over 50 years old. Um, it doesn't account for manufacturing uh, tolerances back in the 60s, which aren't great compared to modern stuff. And you can, you can change your issue from one thing to another just by putting the shift kit in because this isn't machined properly and things just won't operate as quickly as they need to. Uh, so, when you buy a valve body like this in a blister pack that's been built by uh, Hughes, this whole thing has not just been shift kitted, it's been uh, bored for tolerance for the shuttle valves, everything is checked, everything moves correctly. You don't have to pull it apart and drill holes and things and that sort of thing, you just bolt it on like that and you can buy that straight off a shelf hanging in a blister pack like that which I reckon is bloody awesome. Uh, takes all the guesswork out of the game. Um, a brand new or not very old transmission, not so much of an issue because the tolerances are, are much better in the newer stuff because the automated equipment and all that sort of stuff has obviously improved greatly over the years. But on an old jigger like this, things 
may not be right. Um, there might be casting flashes, there could be all sorts of problems within this body itself. And this transmission proves that <laughs> we can have problems that we really shouldn't have. Um, so we know what, what a uh, fresh valve body with a shift kit can do for us, but it's also a good thing to point out what it won't do. That shift kit's not gonna fix a gearbox that's, that's got damage, as in it's old and worn and the clutch packs are worn out. Uh, it's not gonna fix um, problems with the oil pump. The oil pump is crucial in an automatic transmission. If that's damaged and it doesn't have the pressure that it needs, a shift kit is not gonna do anything. It's not gonna fix an oil pump issue, mechanical problems. If the transmission's been rebuilt and the clutch pack stack heights and that sort of thing um, aren't correct, it's not gonna fix the shift for that either. You can't, you can't fix uh, inherent faults within the transmission's um, clutch assemblies or oil pump supply system with a valve body. So you've gotta keep that in mind. If your transmission feels like it's, it's worn out, you can't just put a shift kit in it to fix it. it. If it's worn out, it needs to be rebuilt but when you rebuild it, you do put a shift kit in it so it, you'll get extended life out of the transmission afterwards. So let's bolt this sucker in and get rid of this car. Is the valve body it looks fairly clean and operational but it isn't um, this is your manual valve that connects to your shifter inside the car that spools this back and forward and directs oil all these things here are spool valves with springs inside them that oppose each other as I said it's it's reasonably complicated sort of thing going on in there um, which is where you can get obviously issues uh, so this one here, let's cut this bad boy open. Pretty much looks the same. Funny that, but yeah, all the stuff going on is inside. Looks like they've got a bit of a different sort of shim pack there. There's lots of little proprietary things that different transmission builders will do to these to make them work. Um, the best thing about this, rather than pulling that apart and modifying it, is that someone who actually knows what's inside there's done it, rather than you with a, a drill bit and a wing and a prayer um, modifying that one. One thing you probably would have picked up on if you're a train spotter is what's going on here. That's just a standard uh, screen filter. So this isn't a filter as such, it's just a screen to stop it picking up big chunks. Um, this is the same thing. This has just got this extension on it because it's actually got a huge deep pan on it. Um, so this filter is specific to hold onto this little extender uh, that sits on the base of that aluminium pan and the pickup comes through the sides. So it's a pretty neat thing. Pretty easy to change over, we'll just undo that, swap them over, done deal. There's no need to pull the transmission out of the car to do this job. This, this trans just hasn't actually been refitted yet and it's much easier for us to film this with it out of the car upside down on the bench. It's actually just as easy to do it in the car, sometimes easier because um, certain transmissions have check balls and stuff inside them that if you tip it over and pull the valve body out, they'll fall inside the gearbox and you'll never know where to put them. Um, they're usually designed to be pulled out from the, from the underside, um, things like turbo 700s and that sort of thing. Um, I know because I've been there, there's nothing like trying to find where a check ball goes after, you, after it's fallen out. There's a couple of little things in there that you need to be aware of before you go and bolt your new valve body in. Woody, let's have a look. Uh, this particular box has um, this lever here, which is a basically what you'd call a kick down lever. Uh, in the original valve body, it would have been connected to the carburetor and uh, basically forced it to kick down when you gave it full throttle. Uh, that is no longer required. However, it's still in there, so you have to be careful that you don't 
bind up on it when you put the, the transmission back in, uh, the valve body back in the transmission. Uh, the other thing is this here, that connects to that manual valve that we talked about, the spool valve that goes back and forward, that must go into the correct spot for the, for the um, shifter to operate it correctly. So pretty simple on this box. This is a pretty simple thing to put together, but some, some transmissions are a little bit harder than this. Um, you can see a couple of other big things in here, like a, this is the band brake that hangs onto one of the um, sun gears. Um, these valve bodies, what they do is direct oil, pressurised oil to different points. Um, band brake, clutch packs, some, some transmissions don't have band brakes, they've just got clutch packs. It, it, there's, a, there's a lot of differences, but the, basically that's what the, the valve body does, is direct oil pressure to the correct space to give you your path of gear changes. Let's throw it back in. Got to swap over the pickup to suit the deep pan. One thing of note here is there's this quite a strong spring there, and this uh, filter actually retains it. And interestingly enough, as standard, they don't have this tab on it, but Hughes adds this um, thick metal tab. Well, they possibly do have it as standard, but this one doesn't anymore because it's. 50 years old and it probably got lost but yeah it adds a bit of strength to it to to make sure that this this doesn't bend because that's not very strong it's only a bit of tin filter all bolted up, everything's torqued down. Um, we've double checked that our manual valve is connected and operating off the lever properly. Um, the kick down lever is pushed out of the way because if it's not you can't put it in like I had trouble with. Um, so fine tune a little things like that, make sure you get that right and everything will work. Uh, as usual, the reason why we do this sort of quick tech stuff is because I've experienced something that I think is worth sharing. Um, we're always, always learning. I've done a heap of automatic stuff in the past. Sometimes it's easy and you don't even think about it, but sometimes you get, get problems and you have to work through them. Um, it's good to have uh, people like Pete from Hughes to help us work through stuff like this. Um, it's not all um, fairy tales when you're working on cars all the time. Sometimes they really challenge you. Um, I'm an apprentice when it comes to automatic transmissions. If you want to know more about what we're talking about, from the guys that actually know what they're talking about, head on over to Hughes' um, YouTube channel. They have a lot of um, deep tech stuff on automatic transmissions, especially converters, which they specialise in. Really interesting stuff. It'll turn this box of magic into something that makes sense. So head on over and have a look. And thanks for watching.